Hello, Alan here with Firewalls.com. In this video, we will be discussing and demonstrating how to create network object definitions on your Sophos XG firewall. The Sophos XG firewall uses an object-oriented architecture where an object is defined once and can be reused throughout the configuration in multiple instances. The greatest advantage using this approach is that if something changes, for example, the IP address of your domain controller, we only need to update this in a single place and any policy or instance of this object will be automatically updated. Using hosts, reduces the error of entering incorrect IP addresses, makes it easier to change IP addresses, and increases reliability. Let's go ahead and jump into our web admin and take a look. Network object definitions are created in objects, hosts and services, IP hosts. Here, in our IP host page, we can see a list of all the dynamic hosts, default hosts, and manually added hosts. This list includes all of the dynamic hosts which are automatically added on creation of the VPN remote access connections for IPsec and SSL, and the default hosts, both IPv6 and IPv4 for remote access connections, these guys right here, and along with a few manually added hosts. One thing to note is that system hosts dynamic hosts automatically added on creation of the VPN remote access connections and default hosts used for remote access connections cannot be updated or deleted. This page also provides us an option to update an existing host, delete a host, or add a new host. We can create a new host here by clicking the add button. A little bit different if you are coming from the Sophos SG as these are strictly IP hosts. If you are looking to create a DNS network host definition, this is demonstrated in a separate video. Here, we can create our IP host objects, which support both IPv4 and IPv6, and can be used to define a single IP address, an entire network, ranges of IP addresses, or a list of IP addresses. Here, in this example, we'll go ahead and create a network object for an internal SBS server. We can go ahead and start by giving it a name, which we'll just go ahead and call SBS server. Server. We'll leave this part of our IPv4 family, so be just for a single IP host, enter in the IP address, and if we wanted to include this host as part of an IP host group, you could just add that right here. So in this example here, we are creating an IP host for our SBS server with an IP address of 10.10.1.101. So rather than repeated use of the IP address while configuring security policies or NAT policies, it allows us to create a single entity for our internal SBS server as a host with our IP address. This host will host internal services such as our domain controller, DNS, web services for HTTP, HTTPS, and mail, which can now be selected in any configuration policy that uses this host definition. Just go ahead and select save, where we can now see that our host SBS server has been added successfully. And that's it. Thanks for watching.